Hi, Chuck fans. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna make a summary for Saginomi's attack uh, because uh, this Josek is really complicated, as you might already think. And you see the combination of White's moves, the White's defense formation is really important. Whether Black can make an effective attack or not fully depends on how White's defense formation is like. So what I want to do in this video is I want to show you this table which I've made with Excel here. Uh, so on this part indicates the black strategy and in the upper area there's Saginomi's attack and lower it goes new Saginomi's attack. And in the x-axis we have white's defense formation uh, which is a combination of white's these four moves uh, pawn to 60, pawn to 5d, silver to 4c and lance to 1b. So uh, in this diagram we have here is the basic position of uh, silver to 5g rapid attack and I'm going to show you these four moves in this figure, uh, this pawn pushes and silver and lance. So uh, let me explain how to read this table. So you see many circles in this table, and when it has a circle in the square, that means, uh, for instance, this one, it means pawn to 5D was played by white. So for example, if you look at the first row here, these three moves, pawn 6D and 5D and 4C are indicated by circles and lance won't be hasn't been played. So the position for that would be uh, this position. You see we have these three moves here and the black strategy for that row should be Saginomi's attack uh, which means black has played uh, two moves go to 6h upward, rook to 3h. So in Saginomi's attack Black plays two moves before he makes an attack. So that means White can play uh, three moves here. So all of these four rows have three circles in each. And uh, in New Saginomi's attack here, uh, Black only plays the rook to 3h. So White can only play two moves, right? So that's why we have only two circles for each row. Alright. Now the most important part is here this part shows whether Black's attack starting from pawn to 3e from certain position can be effective or not. So you can see there are two positions in which Black cannot make an effective attack. Uh, you see this one and this one. And actually these are all what we've covered in my previous videos. So uh, you might think Saginomi's attack is pretty difficult to understand. You know, it's hard to remember all the branch moves but to make it easy, I think you should try to remember this table instead of trying to remember all the sequence of moves. When you play a game, if you're playing white, try your best to bring the position into uh, this or this combination. And if you're playing black, try not to bring the game into that position and bring it to other positions that has the sign of effective here. Alright, so uh, why don't we go through the positions uh, here one by one. So what we're seeing here is the first one, the combination of these three moves. We know black can make an effective attack uh, by pawn to 3e, it's a 4f, and this is the basic Saginomi's attack, right? And uh, how about the second one? Uh, second one is uh, this pawn, silver and lance. Well, yeah, we've learned that from this position, Black can't make an effective attack, right? And the third one is, uh, instead of this silver, uh, White keeps the silver in 3b, uh, but if White uh, moves this pawn, well, Black can make an effective attack by uh, the same line, 0 to 4f. You see, even if he opens the bishop diagonal, White can't make a horse to here nor can he drop the bishop to here, right? And uh, the fourth one uh, it's uh, 0 to 4c and, and this pawn is not pushed. Well in this case Saginomi's attack works. Yeah, we've learned this one, right? And rook to 3f, yes. So even if the lance has moved Black is still good because white can't drop his bishop to here on 60. Alright, now uh, let's go to the fifth row. Well, now the fifth row 
is a new Saginum is attack, so black has only played the rook to 3h, so right, white can only make two moves. So in this case, uh, pawn to 5d and simple to 4c, so uh, this position, well, black can make an effective attack because the lance hasn't moved. Alright, so let's go to the next one, and instead of this silver, uh, lance to 1b, well, you see the silver stays here, it doesn't protect the third file. Well, do you remember what kind of attack black should make here? Well, it's not the normal Saginomis attack. After the pawn sack, you take it with the rook. Yeah, and black can do pretty good. All right, and uh, all right, now let's go to the next one. Uh, silver to four C and uh, lance to one B. Here, well, in this case, black can make the normal Saginomis attack. Like that because uh, after the main Joseki line, uh, you have this uh, pawn push to 5e, right? You remember? Alright, now finally, right, white's strongest defense formation pawn to 60 and lance 1b. Right, this position, and when it's this position, black can't make an effective attack. As I've shown in the previous video, number six of Saginaw's attack, and what Black should do here is right. He should move his gold here and wait for White to make one more move. So uh, if White moves this pawn, it's gonna be uh, this combination on the third row, and uh, if he moves the silver, that's uh, this one on the fourth row, right? And both are indicated by effective. Alright, so I hope this summary has been helpful. So uh, now let's give it a break on Static Rook versus 4th Fire Rook Defense. And uh, I think I'm gonna start making videos for other strategies. Maybe uh, some famous Joseki line of Sidebound Picker. Or uh, I wanna do a video on Bishop Exchange Opening too. So look forward to it. So take care and see you next time. Goodbye.